I don't like this really either. I'm not a huge fan. Matt would probably like that. Yeah. He, that's his but style. Something. Gaudy. <laughs> 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 The Gathering Greenhouse, a podcast to help us grow together. We are back here yeah, you from nailed our that. break. You absolutely Whoa. nailed that. You know, a, a little bit of time away from you all really refreshes my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm David. I'm Steve. Nice to meet you. I know John and I didn't stop hanging out. I think we yep. actually hung out more. We didn't, more stop, we didn't stop hanging out either. We didn't. Hey, we weren't supposed no. to tell him. No. Oh, whoops. Well, whoops. I mean, we never hung out we, before, so oh, we couldn't yeah, stop. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you can't stop something you never started, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, this is true. I, would, I, think, I know that I all think, too well. I think it is yeah. great that y'all hang out together. Okay. In fact, I, I, I see Matt every once in a while too. I would say that <laughs> one of my favorite things that, that I've done here at the gathering it's is create a culture us. where everybody but me hangs out together. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. And, and speaking of things that you enjoy, um, I actually brought in something that it, I listened to what our, one of our conversation one, your favorite chip that you said was a Dorito. I rarely right? tell the truth on this podcast was, about Do you food. like Doritos? I do like Doritos, okay. though. <laughs> so you said Doritos, but then it came out that you actually meant to say Pringles, right? Well, I don't know about that. I okay. like both. You like both. Well, perfect, because... You got me Doritos flavored Pringles. I found. Oh, I saw them. Doritos. Doringles. The Doringles. Doringles. No, they've been doing this thing. I wanted to try these because I thought this was interesting. I don't know because I has ne no one has tried these yet. So I'm not sure if they're just essentially using the can to store. Yeah, because miniature. Well, here's the C. That's that's my guess. That does not sound but like... But is the secret the Pringle, or maybe it's the can? Who knows? I mean, maybe it's the can that makes the thing special. So I thought we'd do a little taste test. It's not. Wait, I don't think it's, it's special. Not. I don't hey, think anything... Pringles are don't, special because they taste awesome. I, I'm pretty sure these are just Doritos that mm -hmm. are put into a can. It smells. Would you like a little... Just put some right here. Okay. They're actually just broken Doritos. They're just, They're just broken, broken Doritos. <laughs> I'll get Give me a handful. Whoa! I got big hands. I gotta get up. Oh my gosh, they taste just like Doritos. <laughs> I think they're just Doritos. I think they're Doritos. Can. Yeah. Canned Doritos. They taste exactly. I was really hoping they were gonna be like Pringles that were like nacho cheese. And that's what I thought too. That would be amazing. But what do you think of the size? It's annoying. It's very annoying. I agree. Yeah. It's a choking hazard. The one thing I love about Doritos I like is having that, like, to chew my food. You, when there's a lot of cheese on it, like the extra cheesy ones. Have you had the, the spicy ones? Where would you get these? Brother. I, if, I, I don't think they're as good as regular Doritos. But I will they're say, you get, look, I mean, it's very, the can is very full. It is. It's, it's not. Like for the way most things are packaged yeah, these I days, know. it's impressive. It's impressive. That's what I mean is that like you actually get a lot in here. It makes sense that chips should but, come in cans because then you might get less broken ones. Is this, but is this better marketing or worse marketing? I think this is just marketing and just like, marketing. Oh, hey, general. it's a new thing that's not really new. No, I think it's actually, I think it, it's a, it's a recognition that they're not as good as Pringles. It's Doritos <laughs> basically saying, we know we're not as good as Pringles. Uh, is it the same but company? We make you think How we, did Doritos get into a Pringles can? Or like, did that's they? It's not a Pringles can. It's a Doritos can. What? No, it's sitting right next. All the the Pringles were all there, and then they had Doritos, and they had some other. Yeah, just they, how like Lay's the, has a can too. Just like how the Do Pepsi really? gets in the mm -hmm. Coke can that's right next. Oh, to Oh, it's the, like a plastic. Yeah, one. Yeah, it's like blue. Yeah, yeah. I've seen that. I think it has to do with that's how the grocery stores do it to maximize their shelf space. Although that doesn't matter anymore because they have tons of shelf space. They don't have to maximize. We should have figured out like, <laughs> but this is a Pringles can. How th this? I don't. I don't know how. Are you we going to talk about the, the way? The Pringles can all day? Yeah, that's what, that was my plan. You guys don't want to do that? <laughs> I'm, no. I'm good. All right, let's look at the, let's look at the nutritional information. All right, moving on. Let's, let's stop that part. You needed to bring a Pringles can so we could compare. That would have been, yeah, that would have been a good idea. And then also a Doritos bag. But is Doritos, Matt, you need to Google this here if you have the ability. It are, is, is are Pringles part of the Frito-Lay family? No. They're different. They're not they owned by the same company. Are they, are they just their own thing? I think they're their own thing. Because it's, no, it's clearly nobody's free their own thing anymore. Uh, as of 2012, 
Pringles. Pringles is it is part of Kellogg's. Okay, oh. let's go. Kellogg's. Michigan. Who would have thought? <laughs> this is Kellogg. Battle Creek, Michigan. Okay. Like every every kid in Michigan when they're growing up has two, well, three field trips. One Kellogg. is to Mackinac okay. Island. Is it Kellogg's or Kellogg? One is to Mackinac Island. One is to Greenfield Village yeah. and the Henry Ford Museum. Mm-hmm. And then one is to the Kellogg factory in Battle Creek, Michigan. And it's just Kellogg. Not Kellogg's. Now, it's just Walmart. Yeah. And it's just Kroger Kellogg. And Kroger. And Kroger. Yeah. 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 Meyer. Not around here, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> the closer you get to Kentucky, the more pronounced the S on the end. I'm going is. to Aldi's. <laughs> <laughs> I love them, though. I love Aldi. They're amazing. So, what do you want to do next? Do you want to go into some questions, or you want to? Do you want to? Do you guys want to? Since we had a little bit of break here, I thought maybe, you know, we might share a uh, what we've been up to. What we've been up to, yeah. All right. David, you what have you get been right up to? The questions? You you got to go. <laughs> I've, been, I've, been, I've been working hard. I never stopped. <laughs> Good I spent you. the last three weeks getting yesterday's sermon ready. Okay. <laughs> but didn't you get to go visit family and stuff like that? I did like that? that too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that so wasn't we, notable. <laughs> so we got a, we got a Facebook message this week from somebody asking why uh, Pastor Brian didn't preach at Christmas Eve. And Ryan. I responded saying, I was wondering that myself. Yeah. And I responded, we don't have a Pastor Ryan, but now I'm realizing they probably meant Pastor David. So if that was you, I'm sorry. <laughs> but where were you? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I think, I think the better question is, what hath Brian to do with David? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. That's that's like, see, I could get like, you could, you could like be Donald. Off. Yeah. Something or, yeah. Just a little bit closer than Brian. Yeah. Daryl, but could they just be confused? Like, is it someone they... who goes here? Do you know the person? No, you didn't recognize. I, him? I didn't, you know. But that doesn't. It mean wouldn't be anything. the first time someone has confused us with someone else. Though. Yeah, that's what at first I thought. I, that's how I responded. And then I'm like, do they just yeah, think what David's name was Brian? Another church somewhere whose main Brian pastor Brian. didn't speak at their Christmas Eve service. His what is going Brian. on in this world? Yeah. So it's 2024. <laughs> but that was 2023. <laughs> uh, 2024 has. Has now leaked into 2020. Leaked backwards. <laughs> is that's this the great. year that Western civilization ends? Yes. No, I thought last that, year I might feel have like been that's it. Every but year, you know, we'll see I next year. It, I think it's this year. <laughs> I think it is. I think it, this is it. This is it. I'm not. I'm not so saying it's there's the no end more civil. Times. Yeah, you're saying just no more civilization. Like when the, when the civil war happens, happens which side are you yeah. picking? I'm just kidding. What's that? <laughs> What's <laughs> when the civil war happens? Which side are you picking? <laughs> The winning side, of course. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, going with, I'm going with the North. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> this is a totally different Civil War now. We just still be going, North I'm and going, South. I'm going with the Midwest. I think we're the... going to get a mid I, coast. That's kind of what I think. I'm I think going, it's going to be East I'm and West. I'm going with the middle team. <laughs> the middle the Midwest team. Midwest and the Plains states. Yeah. They're yeah. the ones. They're, they're the ones gonna, that have to go on. They have like they're six guns for every person. I think we're they're good. The middle team. I'm going to pick Canada. No. But where does Ohio land? All we're going to do is say, oops, sorry. Ohio's oops, in the middle, sorry. right? Ohio, Ohio's going to be a battleground. Like, it's going to be rough. We're a little bit in between. In Ohio, I think. Because you're kind of like, I mean, it's definitely more east well, than middle. Well, I imagine there will be it's definitely not an west. attempt by Chicago Wherever Texas to break goes, out. That's where I'm right? going. Chicago will try to break out and join one of the coasts. And so there will be a lot of okay. fighting Leading there. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. to be determined, it's very early on in, right. in this. That's why I have a tank. Of gas in my car. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so shall we get into some uh, some questions here for you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. First one. All is, of these are broken. There, every single one is because we yeah. ate the. Well, that one's technically. Oh, it's folded. It's though. technically not broken. It's <laughs> unbroken. Go on. There you go. Okay. Most of them are broken. So you this talked. Is, this is the first time I've seen you go for seconds. In the yeah. <laughs> you can have the can if you <laughs> like. <laughs> Okay, so seriously though. Yeah. One of the biggest differences between men and women. One of? One of. If one not of, the? No, just one of. Oh. Is how we get our Pringles out of the can. Yep. Because Tilting it or pu- putting your hand in you there? Put we can't in, put you... our hands in there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's, he's, Steve probably can't. <laughs> don't do it, Steve. Don't do it. It's not good. Why not? No, I, yeah, no, no. See, men tilt the can. Pour them out. I would. That's what I would do. I wouldn't try to reach in there. You can't. But women go. Like we'll be on a road trip, and I always get Pringles for road trips. 
If I had and really like, long fingers, I'll be like, Marianne, can we have some some chips? And she'll be like, Yeah. And she just like reaches down into the That's can crazy. and pulls them out. I'm like, I need to see this happen. Well, all women can do it because they have smaller hands. Not not all women. All of them. Yep, every single one. <laughs> and no men can reach into the Pringles can. This sounds <laughs> no real men. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What if they designed a Pringle can that you could put your hand in? That would be awesome. <laughs> it's called a bag. It's just called a bag. <laughs> Pringles. What now? What is better for dumping in your mouth, the bag or the Pringle <laughs> can? <laughs> Whoa. This is where the minis wait, come in. Wait, 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 going directly wait, in your mouth. What, what did you just say? Like, what is better? But I would have used the word pouring. Um, dump the bag. He said dumping. Yeah, dump the bag right into your mouth. <laughs> we have to edit that out. <laughs> don't take that. Don't take that as a direct quote. Uh, I Roll the tape. Okay. <laughs> And we're back. Uh, question for you, David. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite method of dumping things into your What's your David of <laughs> dumping the chips into your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Um. <sighs> Happy I'm New Year, y'all. Your, I'm reading your mug there. May the bridges I burn light the way. And it's a funny quote. It is a fu- who, who quote. I picked this up at a little store okay. in, in Lebanon. I bet that guy had a bunch of friends. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember what it's called. It's it's right next to that uh, Thai place. Is it? Uh, Thailand. Nope. Thai. Nope. It's right right like three or four stops down from that place that has good food. The Golden Lamp Stand <laughs> oh, or something. Okay, the Golden, golden Lamp. Gold is lamp. Is? Yep. Yeah, gold lamp stand. <laughs> I don't know what it the is. Golden lamp stand of destiny. Hey, that place is famous, right? I've heard eighteen hundreds famous. Yeah, it's haunted. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it was a, it was a natural stopping place for the carriages between Cincinnati and Columbus. Oh, uh-huh, okay. So, so should we should we get into more serious things? That's pretty. That's the fourth right time there. you've asked that. So I'm just saying, do we should we have some content? <laughs> I feel like gonna, I, yeah, this has been let's, great. Let's let's try. Okay. So why do so many churches have small groups instead of Sunday school classes? What's the deal with yeah. with no more Sunday school classes? So it's kind of a cultural phenomenon that's happened over the last, what, maybe 30 years mm-hmm. or so? Yeah. Um, and so there's there's people who are my age, maybe a little bit your age, yeah. older than us, mm-hmm. who remember the old days, you know, everybody had, went to Sunday school. So you have like your church service, and then you'd have Sunday school, or you have Sunday school, and then you'd have the church service. All the kids go to their classes, and the adults would all have classes too, right? Yeah. They're usually broken up by age, right? You got your your young marrieds, and then you got your middle marrieds, and then you got your old people, yeah. and then you got your college and career. Yeah. Um, and they just have Sunday school class, and then that kind of went away. So why? Oh, right. <laughs> why did it go away? Why so, so many churches? They ran out of flannel graphs. So a lot, of, a lot of churches have replaced that model with, with small groups. And I, I think there's a lot of reasons why. Yeah. Um, I think a couple of the reasons would be that um, it's more relational to have a small group. Mm-hmm. It gives the people the opportunity to know each other a little bit more, to share their lives a little bit more. I think society has trended more towards... Uh, a mindset that many voices are better than one voice. Mm-hmm. And so since the Sunday school model was a lecture, yeah, uh, that, that groups, was, that's what I was, the next thing yeah. I was com- coming to is, do you see it? I mean, I know that there was probably multiple ways to do mm-hmm. it, but uh, was traditionally Sunday school classes, the lecture where yeah. there's a teacher up front teaching, there's mm-hmm. no real discussion. Right. Yeah. Just, and you know, and, and it depends on, you know, the class, you know, obviously there'd be some teachers who probably enjoyed discussion more than others, but generally the model was more lecture th- th- than it was discussion. So small groups, more discussion. And, and honestly, that's probably better for learning. Yeah. Right. If you actually are able to engage some, the subject matter, you learn a little bit better. So I think that's why. I think there's other reasons why. I think one of the reasons why is that people stop being willing to give up that much time on a Sunday morning Mm -hmm. to be at church for three or four hours. They're more willing to do a group during the week. Um, Why do we do it, though? 
why do we do groups instead of yeah. Sunday school class? Uh, while I would say that we value connection and we also value relationships, mm-hmm. and we believe that that small groups, which we just call them groups, um, we we feel that that's the best model for connection and, yeah. and relationships being right. built. And also, I mean, I, we would also say the point of of groups is to see life change, and I think that often what they say is no offense to either of us and John included in this is you probably can't name the top 10 sermons you ever heard, but you can name the top 10 people who've impacted your life. You, know, I you can. probably heard, probably heard that quote before. The last actually, 10 actually, that in, our, in our one-on-one today, John listed, listed my top, top, top 10, 10 <laughs> sermons. <laughs> yeah. We should have, we should, that's why it's on. I've only um, heard them all twice. So it's New, <laughs> New Year's Eve Sunday service. We should have just done a countdown and you just preached back to back your top 10 sermons that sounds all that, that day sounds all the like, way till the ball drops I'll, I'll bet i'll bet people would love that yeah yeah no i agree with anyone with that. insomnia yeah, yeah. life change really has to be the the core of it yeah and i think sometimes this in the sunday school model not always right you know but sometimes in the sunday school model uh head knowledge was primary yeah like people wanted to learn more i remember actually having a conversation with a guy who is very into Sunday school, yeah. right? I actually wrote my master's thesis on this topic. Did you know that? I did not know that. See, now you know something. Okay. On, on how to transition a, a traditional church from the Sunday school model of discipleship to a small group model of discipleship. That was my my master's thesis. So I was, I was talking to a guy in the church who was a Sunday school teacher, and he you know, he said, you know, the, the goal of the church is to teach to teach content. He's like, that's what the Great Commission says, right? Go into all the world and teach. And I said, and what does it say right after that? Because it says teach to observe, which means teach to do. So the, the point of the Great Commission is not to teach head knowledge, but to teach how to live. Yeah. And, and that, that happens much more in small groups, I think. But there's, there's one other reason why we do small groups instead of Sunday school. We don't have the space. We don't have the space. <laughs> we don't have the space. I know that's a very practical reason. But um, we do have Sunday groups. Why, but why, why don't we have the space? Do you know why? They just never decided because not to build the it. the building's not big enough. I mean, but why didn't they build it big enough? They didn't have any money. They didn't have the money to do it. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I, I never knew. I'm like, why don't we have classrooms. Well, I think the original plans for this building were actually had more stuff. Okay. More and, classrooms? Well, they, they they chopped this building down to what they, the, the bare essentials that they could afford. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. So, gotcha. But maybe someday. Yes. We'll see. Yeah. No, it is, it is definitely is a challenge to fit everything in here. Yeah. So. Also, also, we don't have space just because we have too many people. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, mean, I shouldn't say too many. Yeah, not too, too many. Ma- too many people for the space. Yeah, but there's only like there's only like three classrooms mm-hmm. that were built. And now we we cut that in half to the, uh, actually really only two. Yeah. So I I don't know how we could even have done that in the beginning. Right. But okay. So next qu- question. Moving on here. Are there any examples of small groups in the Bible? Ooh, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, maybe the disciples? You've got one. Oh, Steve, was you didn't raise your yours? hand. That was what I was going to say. <laughs> the 12 disciples, maybe? Yeah. So Jesus was a small group leader? That's actually interesting because they actually really did share their lives yeah. with each other. They were like, together all the time. I think there's other ones, too, though, right? Can you think of others? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That's real, yeah. Actually, that's a, a really good one yeah. because you know Jesus K- later. Kate was learning about that in uh, Sunday in Sunday school. school. Yeah, that's why. Go. Jesus later on says, you know, where two or three are gathered, what does he say after that? I am, I am there. It, I am there, and then you have Shadrach, Meshach, and you go three are gathered, and mm-hmm. Jesus was there with them. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He was. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any uh, like David's band of merry men? The say, merry men. Yep. Paul had a like a, a cohort that he seemed to be closer with. Yeah, than, he's always listing the, the mm-hmm. people who are with Timothy. him. Timothy, mm-hmm. yep. was he was like a traveling small group show. Yeah, I think there's a, I think there's a lot more. I think you you know you go on and on. Well, you're just going to discover there's a lot of them. Yeah, right. When um, what when the guy I can't remember when wasn't it when Paul broke out of was relieved from prison. He went to that house and banged on the door. Oh, and they, they, were they were there praying. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, what was the name of the? I don't remember whose house it was. I should know that. Cornelius. No. no, that's not it. No, 
first name. Oh, it was a woman. Yeah, because she came to the door. She yeah. thought it was a ghost. Yeah. Right, she left him there. Right. <laughs> yeah. You got Aaron and her who held up Moses' arms so that yeah. the battle could continue. That's H U R, not H E R. It's actually a guy's name, not a pronoun. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what's the next question? Oh, next Aaron question slash here. her. <laughs> okay. Uh, can't someone experience connection and community without being in a small group? Mm. Mm-hmm. Ooh. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Problem solved. Steve definitively says no. So, so, I mean, this is a little bit of a... A setup question? Yeah, it's a little bit of a setup question. You're right, it is. Because... It's it's yes and no, right? Because sure. if you're if you're getting connection, you can't get connection by yourself, obviously. Right. But does it have to be an established group? Well, what if what if I say I get my connection by you know I watch Stephen Furtick every Sunday? Yeah, that's by yourself. <laughs> you yeah, know? but I'm connecting with him. Yeah, but there's no there's no dial the there's no there's no sharing back. It's so one way communication. You're not communicating a, back. In if, any way. I, I scroll if, through <laughs> Christian influencers on TikTok. There, there's no getting to know the other person and sharing. You know, there's nothing. A, there's a nothing relationship that going on. built upon consumption is not connection, right? So. It, uh, a real connection with somebody is back and forth. Mm. But if my relationship to somebody is purely what I get out of that and, and, and I don't, I'm not trying to sound super negative, but that's what your relationship is to influencers. That's what your mm-hmm. relationship is to the shows you watch. You are consuming content they put out. That doesn't mean it's bad. It's probably beneficial for you to consume some of that content, but that is not, you are not connected because there's no, there's no back and forth. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that's kind of the big difference between, you know, maybe, you know, saying, oh, I'm connected to this person on the internet versus actually knowing them and having a yep. real conversation with them. Right. Like connection requires withdrawals and investments. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You have to, you have to receive and give. And, and so you're right. You can't do that on your own. So, so in a sense, you can't have connection without other people. Yeah. But what about like just church small groups? Like, do I have to be, like the gathering starting a bunch of new small groups yeah. here in a couple of weeks, do I have to be a part of one of those groups in order to grow spiritually? No, I, absolutely not. You don't have to, but I would say you need to, like, like if you're getting connection and, um, you know, s- support and mentorship, right? We talked about that on Sunday and mm-hmm. partnership. Um, you can get that, in other places, but it's still kind of a group, right? You, right? you should be, if the goal of, of a being in a small group is life change, then you have to have ask. It can't just be your aspects of it that would help life change take place. Like, well, so you can't just get together and, um, do an activity where you're not, there's no discussion at all about life change. What, what if I say, but I can grow on my own, right? Like I can spend, I can spend two hours every morning in the word and in prayer. I would on say it's my not own. about you. I would probably say oh, that it's not just about harsh, you, man. I, I, but I mean, that's, that's the reality of life. We need each other and we, God has designed us to need each other and we grow better together. Um, so it's not, and and coming outside of yourself helps you also grow to places you never even knew you were, you could so, so, growing to. So you're saying if I spend how about three hours every morning in the Word and in prayer every day, I can't grow spiritually. I mean, you can, yes, but can, so so I, I think he's gonna he's he's like shaking. He's his ready. Head. No, but, so I say. No. Uh, you, you can, right? Yeah. It is like, and, and there are people who like come to Jesus while they're in prison and in a cell by themselves. Like you, you can grow and I'm not saying you can't, but to really step, you can't step into the fullness of what it means to live the life that Christ wants you to live unless you're on others, right? Uh, love the Lord, your God with all your heart or in the second is like it, love your neighbor, right? That's relationship. And if you don't do that, how can you experience the fullness of what God wants for us to, to experience? Yeah. Well, I might I might relate it to this. Like you ever see like the world's tough man competitions where the guys are like huge. I love those shows. Yeah, they're awesome. I've been thinking of competing. Oh, really? <laughs> but so like that's like those people have like 
you know, bulked up as much as they possibly can. But then when it comes to like normal everyday activities, they're useless, right? Because they got I all this a sermon on this. Did you really? I, I I don't think it was before. I think it was before you were here. Okay, though. but I'm just saying, like that's the same kind of concept. Yeah, like, yeah, like their can, muscles are so, so big huge, they can't, can't scratch their like, back. You can't drive a car because yeah. so you're like biceps. They need too big. somebody to come scratch their back. <laughs> So yeah, is it possible to grow? Yeah, but in grow in ways that we're supposed to grow, <laughs> right? You know, the way that we're we're designed to. I think I feel like God has laid a path and plan for us. Yeah, can we divert from it and like and and gain a lot for ourselves? Yeah, but you know what? God's path is always true yeah. and always right. So so yeah. let me ask right. this. So let's say I don't like people. Right. Let's right. say I, I like being by myself. Wait, is this fictional? So then, so then you need group even more. So I'll, I'll like, be I'll I'm be like, an example. Um, I think without Christ, my personality would lead me to be more of like a hermit. Right. Yeah. I, I I don't like probably I, me even more than yeah, you. David, <laughs> I'm in the woods, and then David's really in the woods, right? And uh, so, but would you say you know even if I don't like groups, I don't like people. Why? Why is it beneficial for me? Yeah. Like, if it's should I do something I don't enjoy? Why yeah. would any of us have kids? You know, like it's the same kind of concept. Like, why? Yeah, like well, I think I'm not sure it's exactly. Well, serious. I mean, it's the same kind of like <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll, you have to do a lot. I think I would them. love my kids even if I didn't have Jesus. Well, yeah, but I mean, like there are a lot of work and effort. But it would be a lot tougher sometimes. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I, I mean, I just I think they grow love and you stretch you in in ways that you never even knew you need to be yeah. grow, grew, gr- grown grown and stretched grown. it's it's like your sermon on sunday of like we we have to be moving along in in those steps or we'll always mm-hmm. stay a child yeah. an infant versus um you know where where is our full potential in life mm-hmm. um yeah let me let me take a different approach to okay. this okay this can take me a second to develop but i'll i'll, I'll do my best so so in john 13 Right, Jesus with his disciples right before he dies. So they're they're sharing the Last Supper. Um, this is right after Judas has left. So he's washed their feet. You know they've they've taken uh, the the bread and Judas dips his and Jesus says, go do what you got to do. So they're right there in, in the upper room. And so Jesus is talking to them, and he says to them, "A new command I have for you." All right, I want to pause right there for a second. So I, I think sometimes I'm going to go a different direction for a second. And I'll bring it back. I, I think sometimes, and I, I do this as a pastor, I do this in my sermons, and I think it's a good thing to do. I, I try to help God's words make sense to people, right? And so I'll, I'll say something like, you know, God says, like totally different example. God says sexuality should be reserved for marriage, right? And I'll sometimes take some time to explain why God says that, like why that's actually good for us. It's good for society. It's good for culture. And, and so we ought to listen to what God's word. I, I, so I try to say, hey, look, it's beneficial to do what God says. But I also think that there's a place for us sometimes to simply say, well, it's what God says. Right? And, and, and maybe I can't even tell you why. Like, what if I couldn't explain why it's good for society or good for culture, but I still know that God said it? Shouldn't I still do it? So, so now come back to Jesus, right? So Jesus says, a new command I have for you. And, and then put it in the context of this is, this is the end of the road for him with his disciples. So this is the one thing he's going to leave them with before he you know, is gone. And, and so what's going to be this, this startling command that he gives? And he doesn't say, here's my command for you. Have personal devotions every morning. That wasn't the command. Mm-hmm. The, the command wasn't, you know, tithe 10% of your income every week. It wasn't, you know, repeat the Lord's prayer at least one. It wasn't any of that stuff. It was love one another. So, so Jesus' last and maybe, maybe biggest command to his disciples is be in community. Share your lives with each other. You know, be a part yeah. of each other's lives. And, and so then I, out of all that, I say this. Maybe we don't have to necessarily explain why it matters. We can just say, because Jesus said, mm-hmm. right? Because at the end of the day, how did, how did the serpent open in Genesis 3? Has God really said? And so sometimes it's okay for us to just say, well, Jesus said this was the best way to do it. So that's why we do it that way. Um, and I think at the end of the day, that's true of community. It's true of connectedness. It's true of sharing your life. Hey, uh, about th- there's lots of good reasons, and we can give lots of great illustrations. But at the end of the day, Jesus said to do it. That's why we do it. Well, I, th- I think that's that's part of faith for a lot of us. Is it's really hard to submit your reason and your logic, and you know, uh, 
there are things that I flesh human John disagree with God about, right? <laughs> like right. that's like mm-hmm. I disagree with God. And in those things that I disagree with, I have to submit mm-hmm. to what God says. And it doesn't mean that like, you know, I'm sitting there all the time, like arguing with God, obviously like, um, and it's not just some simple thing, but I wrestle and I say like, you know, God, why is it this way? Why do you have this? I w- it would be so much easier if, if it was just the way I would want it to be. Um, but at the end, I trust that God's, God's uh, understanding and his knowledge and his wisdom are so much higher than the smartest version of me. Yeah. Right. And, and I, and I, I choose that, you know, and, right. but it's hard. I mean, it's, it's, that's part of, you know, I think often we think of following Christ and our faith is like this habitual, like we, Oh, I just make my behavior match. But often it's also sometimes submitting. It's not just submitting your behavior, but it's submitting, um, your, your, your reasoning for his Mm -hmm. reasoning. Yeah. It's choosing to agree with him even when it doesn't make sense. Yeah. By the way, for those of you out there thinking John's like a heretic for saying he disagrees with God all the time, you need to read the Psalms. Yeah. Because the, the Psalms are full of David, a man after God's own heart, saying, God, well, I disagree. The, but yeah. that's the best part of, of the Psalms. They start off, God, I'm so mad at them. I, I just want you to like do all these things that are not things that God would, would do. Like, I want you to destroy my enemies just now. And, you know, mm-hmm. and he's so angry. And, and, and uh, or God, why did you abandon me? And all these things that God didn't do. He's wrestling. But they always end with, but I know that you're going to be faithful. I know that you are in, in control of all this. And they always end that yeah. way. And, th- and that's what we're talking about is even in those moments where I don't like it and it doesn't make sense, do I still come back to that place yeah. of saying, but you're in charge yeah. and I'm going to submit to you. Right. But it isn't, I mean, I feel like that in life that the most difficult things are where we grow the most mm-hmm. and that that's this is all in line in in part of that of you know there's no growth without a little bit of pain yeah. or a lot of pain. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just don't really know much in life that is big and is worth it that doesn't require a good amount of work and yeah. and a healthy yeah. amount of pain involved right. in it. Yeah. So we all agree that. You, know, you don't have to be in an official small group to grow spiritually, but if you're not in relationship with others, yeah. you're going to have a hard time growing spiritually. Yeah, and, and it's it's you know the nice thing about a a sp- specific small group at a church is that you know you know you're going to have um, other people who are on the same path as you, mm-hmm. wanting to grow closer to God together. You're going to have um, group leaders who have been trained and equipped to do that. Mm -hmm. And you're also going to have a a curriculum that is pointing you in that direction as well. So you're going to have some good things already in place. Now, could you do all those on your own? Yeah. Um, But Mm -hmm. we we believe that this is a a recipe for life change and growth. So there's a, there's a huge difference between a a small group meeting and a Super Bowl watch party. Yeah. You know, a Super Bowl watch party, the the express purpose there is to see the lions win. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm. the, a small group, the express purpose is to help you grow. And that intentionality is is really important. If you're not intentional about growing in any area of your life, you're not going to grow. No. And spiritually, that's true too. If you're not intentional about your spiritual growth, you won't grow spiritually. That's why small groups are so helpful. Yeah. I was just thinking about this because you brought up uh, John 13. Um, but uh, in John 13, it says, uh, you will know, or they will know you are my disciples, Mm -hmm. um, by the way that you, and we often say by the way that you love, but it's the way you love one another. Right. And so, and so it's Christians, the way you love other Christians and are in relationship with other Christians is how the world will know you are Christians. And then I was thinking about this, all of the fruit of the spirit require relationship to to be lived out and to be practiced. Well, you're actually preaching some of my upcoming sermons. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I'm actually the one who uh, writes all the sermons here. I'm (laughs) Are you saying I use a (laughs) ghostwriter? I'm very real. (laughs) Yeah, no, like the the one another's is a whole big topic to unpack. Maybe yeah. in upcoming weeks in the podcast, we can do that a little bit because there's there, there's a lot to process in that verse in John 13 where he says, love one another by this. All men will know you're my disciples by your love for one another. And he comes back to that principle in John 15 uh, where he's talking about the vine and the branches, which is yep. all about spiritual growth. But he wraps all of that up also by, here's my command, love one another. Yep. So super important command. Yep. All right, are we out of time here? Can we? I had, I did have one more. There's no scoreboard. Okay, I did have one more thing. <laughs> this is something that um, 
that I just thought was interesting. I read this and I wanted to get your guys' take on it. And I have a uh, there's an article um, by Market Watch that I that I read, and it's uh, a story about um, Elon Musk. Hey, look here. Almost. It's a story about Elon Musk. As you know, that he bought. Twitter, which is now X. X. Yeah. But he said something he is in the article on that I found podcast, I very think, interesting. <laughs> um, but, you know, we've been talking, like, there's been a lot of talk about AI and and this this idea of, like, this consciousness that mm-hmm. gives gives um, a lot of different advice on, on various topics. But, so what Elon Musk said in this article is that he wants to turn X into a giant brain or collective. Like, that's his goal with X. And so it'd be a system that individuals report and give opinions, envisioning it's a massive intelligence network. So all the world uniting? So, I mean, what are your what are your thoughts on that? I, I, I'm curious what he meant by that, because he's historically been fairly anti-AI. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I think he's much more talking about the, like, the, the a... Super version of the market of uh, of ideas of free ideas. Yeah, basically no, Wikipedia on steroids. Yeah, um, and just letting things work themselves out and argue and you know somehow and if we can do that on a supercharged level, what could that do? Mm-hmm. Um, probably cause a lot of chaos, but you might get something really cool at the end. You know. Yeah, and why do you think he's been against AI? He's scared of it. He, yeah, he, well, he I said, mean, that he just said, he has been for years. But so, so are so are some other ones who are. I'm scared of it. I am doing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but so are some other people AI who are. AI is the antichrist. You hear it here first. <laughs> one one of the things I I mean it's it's and it's AI is bringing up so many interesting questions about you know so uh, you use the word consciousness right look but consciousness and humanity the soul are the was same. created in the image of God AI was created in the image, image of man. man yeah. I'm just saying when we make things in our own image, it usually goes great for us <laughs> every single time. Every time. Are you, are you getting the answer you were hoping for? Uh, no, I just wanted to see your your take on, on that. I, I think John is right. Mm-hmm. I think it's this idea of, you know, if we all put our minds together, then we can really elevate. Maybe we can build a tower <laughs> that, was that goes saying. all the way to heaven. <laughs> if only there was a story somewhere, <laughs> somewhere about that. I actually think that is what the Tower of Babel story is about, is that when it talks about languages, I think there's a real likelihood that you could translate that same word as ideology. And when all of humanity shares an ideology, they think it's going to be great, and God knows they're going to destroy themselves. So maybe that's what Matt, we're going to do. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for cheerful note. Just a cheerful note. The world is going to end in twenty twenty four. It's going to be the best year ever. <laughs> the end of Nothing Western civilization. <laughs> we have to look back. Okay, we have to mark. Next so get year, your small mark of the now. beast. We're going to look back. We're going to look back. <laughs> mark our calendars and look back. Oh, calendars. Mark your calendars, not the mark of the beast. That's what he yeah. meant. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Got to complete my yes. train of thought before I move on to the next. I feel sentence. like maybe we just need to dump this whole episode. <laughs> we, we should <laughs> straight into your mouth. <laughs> we should. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, have a great day and we will see you next time. Happy New Year.